Hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 420. That's 420 of the Agostino Zynga Show. How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. If it's your first time tuning into a show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below, turn off your notification bell, save my page on your bookmarks and all that good stuff. Do whatever you can do to make sure you're locked in, tuned in to this channel as I keep uploading my podcast as per usual. If you're listening to this via the audio platforms, right? YouTube, I mean, what, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, iTunes, whatever else you listen to, Overcast, blah, 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 blah. Make sure you download my uh, podcast, share it with all your friends. And of course, leave me a five star review. That will go a long way to making sure you're helping spreading it. And if I end up getting some ads, I'll need some of your reviews in order to sell myself. And of course, if you want to support the show via Patreon, that support is always more than welcome. Patreon.com for slash Agostino. That's patreon.com for slash A G O S T I N H O. You can help me buy a Lexus G3, GS300 if you can, right? Support the fund. Um, I'm uploading a podcast on there once per month, obviously a little bit more no holds barred, a few more racier topics. So if you want to hear me discussing some of those things, definitely jump onto my Patreon. First episode will go up in a couple of weeks on that Patreon. I had to cleanse it and start again. So from this month going forward, one podcast per month available via the Patreon for little as $1 per month. It's nothing really. And, and it obviously goes up if you want to support, keep going on that way. But for the most part, get signed in, get locked in, patreon.com for Agostino. You can find the link in the show note description to support the show. Click that link on there. Pick the tier that is most applicable to you. Get signed up, get involved, and I'm going to deliver you one exclusive behind the paywall podcast on Patreon just for you. So sign up on there right now. Patreon.com for Agostino. Patreon.com for us. A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O. Don't delay. Get in there today. But yeah, here we are, man. Here we are. 420, right? We we got that um weed number finally. We got that number that 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 good 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 kush number. You know those people out there that exist that have like, you know, that weed personality thing. What's worse? If you're somebody that's super into beer and you're like, you know, all about your IPAs and all that sort of nonsense nonsense stuff or somebody that's really into their weed body highs head highs all this malarkey shut up give me the joint and keep it moving do you know what i mean um i don't know i've never i guess i've never I, I say never when i've got like a whole flipping crate full of magazines trainers clothings um accessories jackets uh pff, djing equipment i, I was gonna say I, I don't really get into stuff like that but i get into normal stuff you know gadgets and material things but when it comes to like I don't know, coffee, beer. I always feel like whoever's, I always feel like the guys that are into like coffee and beer super hard and like weed are usually not good at sports. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's different in America because I think, you know, weed is like cigarettes over there. But in the UK or Europe, at least, people that are really super into their sort of 420 life, you know, you're not going to pick your 420 friend to be um, a member of your five side team on the weekend are you he's probably not going to be the best option um he's probably going to turn up late he's probably going to be high as fuck and he's not going to take it too seriously <laughs> so i don't know man maybe it's just me i always feel like those guys are like super unathletic um uninteresting a little bit 2d right it's you know they have their interest and that's just about it you know, i find it very i find it um i would say i won't be surprised like if you find it very difficult to introduce something new to someone like that like try and uh, you know show them another interest that he could also be interested in they'd be like nah man i've got my stuff you know i know what i like it's like oh, you're boring i don't know there's something about people that have those um personalities wrapped up in the things that they do or no in the things that they own or the things that they enjoy that i don't really like i don't know what it is about it i, I think you know personalities can be a little bit should be a little bit more interesting and layered as opposed to just oh yeah i like this thing and this is going to consume my entire life like the people the same could be said for the people that are like super into techno and they only listen to techno and they always wear all black and they always look sad and angry and they always have flipping bike lock chains around their neck and shit it's like come on give it a rest when we're all in when we're all in Bergheim, we put our outfits on we go hard but monday to friday going going out with your mum for dinner you don't need to be putting on such ridiculous outfits isn't it I would say that's my opinion. Again, what do I know? What do I know? Just my opinion. My opinion. Anyway, enough of that blabbering. Before we start the show, just want to offer my thoughts and prayers out to Joseph Capriati. Um, 
some absolutely terrible news broke on the social media um this morning um i was hoping i was hoping and praying it wasn't anything too tragic but still um it's still bad as it is because um he's stayed in stable conditions but immediately when i saw the headline i was like no come on man don't start off the year like this but this is courtesy of mixed mag and sister following joseph capriati hospitalized after being stabbed by his father right as crazy and nutty as that sounds yeah that's basically the truth of it um, the DJ's father has been arrested for attempted murder. It says the following, Joseph Capriati has been hospitalized after being stabbed by his father. The two allegedly got into a fight during Capriati's father, um, which Capriati's father, 61, stabbed his son in the chest with a kitchen knife. Capriati has been taken to the Casareta hospital and his father has been arrested for attempted murder. Casareta, so um, Capriati um, usually resides in Spain, but since the coronavirus pandemic, he has returned to live with his family in Casareta, Italy absolutely crazy news isn't it so again so far the last thing i've heard from um some other dj i think he was a close friend of his posted that he's in a stable condition now but again still you know offering my thoughts and prayers go out to him don't really know the the crux of the story don't really care to be honest um mostly wishing him a speedy recovery and hopefully he gets around um to doing what he loves best um sooner rather than later but god almighty it's made more tragic too because i i just had listened or re-watched his episode of dj and beers which you should definitely check out if you're a fan of dance music it's on um chris liebling's channel essentially six six djs right he basically they basically sit down um every thursday have a little bit of a conversation you know about the world of dance music and djing of course with a couple of beers exchanged between them uh via zoom and then they sometimes have guests sometimes it's just those guys talking amongst themselves but the one with joseph capriati was incredibly incredibly inspiring um you could just see how passionate he is about the music how passionate he is about the culture how passionate he is about his craft um he's got stories for days and just kind you know the warmth of him and because i think sometimes you forget right i think i can sometimes be like that too because there's so many different splinters and groups of people within dance music and everyone gets a bit clicky but sometimes you can look at somebody like a Joseph Capriati and see all these pictures of him hugging people and kissing everyone behind the decks and just being a whole bubble, a whole, um, you know, um, a bubble of good times. And you can sometimes look at it and be a little bit cynical and be like, ah, corny, cringe. But then the moment you listen to him actually speaking on that DJ and Beers um, podcast and you see how deep his history is in dance music, um, how this has been his singular pursuit since, you know, he was a teenager, essentially. And he, he's effectively been able to kind of make his dreams a reality. Like, I kind of got the feeling DJs are equivalent to him. DJs were equivalent to like football players to him. You know, like when you're like a footballer, when you're a kid and you, grow, you, you know, you try your best to become pro and you idolize these like amazing professional footballers. And then somehow you're lucky enough to actually become a professional footballer and you're sharing the pitch with people that you had their posters on your wall. That's what I got the feeling watching Joseph Capriati's um, DJs and Beers um, interview and podcast. He was just chuffed to be around all these people that he kind of idolized growing up, people that he thought were the shits and still think they're the shit. So, you know, it's tragic to hear this stuff happening because it's, he, I don't know why this, that tends to happen. Whenever you, somebody gets into, whenever somebody crosses, is your consciousness and you're some somehow aware of them um sooner rather than later something either really great happens something really bad happens i don't know why that is maybe because it's you're paying attention there's probably some psychological um uh, or physiological no, yeah probably some psychological reasoning behind that i'm pretty sure but regardless of the fact anyway um i'm wishing that guy a speedy recovery man like he is a real pillar of dance music um you know history today and tomorrow he's got a lot more to give and to offer up to the scene um, and again, hoping he, wishing him a speedy recovery, thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Again, it's probably the toughest, toughest time to go through with it being allegedly his father that stabbed him in the chest. I'm pretty sure they're not going through the best of time. So again, these are one of those m moments, you know, when everyone was kind of, you know, pretending, not pretending, but they were kind of showing pictures of flipping Eric Murillo and, you know, excusing his behavior online. These are the times that people need your support, especially if you're close to him, do you know what I mean? And you're actually his real friend. You should be reaching out to his family, trying to get in touch, trying to make his life and the family's life as easy as possible by offering up some help sending some money whatever you can do this is where friendship actually comes in it's all well and good him getting you guest list helping you out with free drinks and all this sort of shit and giving you um gigs to go and play at but this is where people actually need you um through this really troubling time where there's probably a lot more to the story than we actually know about stuff that we probably should have no business even knowing in the first place but because he's a public figure it is what it is so anyway th um, that regardless i'll end it by saying um thoughts and prayers go out to joseph capriati and his whole family hope he gets well very very soon and he's back doing what he loves um because he has a lot more to offer to the world but yeah for some prayers go out to joseph capriati get well soon mate wishing you a speedy speedy recovery 
Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, no, we'll read this next. We'll read this at the end. But let's let's have a bit of a palate cleanser. A little bit of a funny one because I love all this stuff. You know me and my public freakouts. I love a good public freakout. I love a good Karen um, playing victim. And this is just this is just beautiful because to me it personifies everything that I kind of am curious about. No, I'm very curious. Things that I've kind of pondered over over COVID. Right, I'm pondering why are all these influencers flying to all these exotic locations and posting pictures every time. Why are they throwing all these house parties and uploading footage on their social media platforms? Why is the government still resistant to closing the borders or having some sort of border control, even though the numbers are completely spiking? Why, 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 why? Right, all these questions are overhead. Another why is like. I wonder what it must feel like to just exist in a world as a middle-aged white lady. Like, what is that actually like? Like, how carefree and easy, you know, relatively compared to, you know, your everyday man is being a white lady, especially a middle-class, middle-aged white lady. Like, how lovely must that existence be? You get up in the morning, you know, just stretch your arms uh, blissfully. You grab your dog, you go out for a little walk in your little sundress, and then the rest... It's history. That's what happens. The internet. This man and his Doberman just attacked me and my Chihuahua. It's not a Doberman. It's the mind fart. Hey, look. What are you doing? <laughs> no, he didn't. And in case you're listening to this video podcast, there's a lady, middle-aged, I don't know what she is. She's got a Chihuahua and she's in the park somewhere with her little Birkenstock sandals on and her bleached blonde hair. And she got into some sort of altercation with a dog owner. And I don't know what it is about white people and getting into arguments with other dog owners. I don't know why that's a thing. Um, you would assume there'd be a little bit of, I guess because you both got dogs, you don't fear them. But I'd assume there'd be a little bit of fear because essentially you've each got like a little attack weapon on your leash that you can kind of deploy whenever needs be. And we all know, you know, dogs don't really fear each other based on size. They're kind of got, they've, they, 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 they don't really have an inferiority complex in that regard, unless you've got, you know, a dog that's just a pussy. It's just unlucky. But for the most part, dogs will just, you know, attack each other if they get told or if they feel like their owner is in danger so you'd assume there'd be a little bit more of um i won't say tax but there'd be a little bit more hesitation to kind of get involved in altercation but white people love getting in beefs where they've got their dogs out i don't know what that is so she gets into some sort of argument and then she alleges that the guy has got a doberman which he clearly doesn't have a doberman again i don't know dogs too tough but i know that's not a doberman and then then i guess she has a bit of a brain fart she doesn't know what to say next and then she makes up this this game in her head that her dog his dog or the guy's dog who's filming it basically bit her on the leg which she obviously didn't and as you can tell from the screens and it's just like you know she's screaming like a football player doesn't it ah ah but there's nothing really going on help, help! Police, police, help! what is are you okay? look at no, that this man just, <laughs> just beat me help police i'm sorry she's not a doberman she's just she's <laughs> acting police, crazy you need the police She's just lying on the ground now. <laughs> that is that is a personification of what it's like to be a white lady, isn't it? She's legitimately lying on the ground and her chihuahua is just, you know, fucking around, doing whatever. I think copying its owner in some regard, doing a couple of stretches itself. And it's just like, how lovely must it be to be a middle-aged white lady in America? It must be so blissful in existence. You have no care in the world. You have little to no social responsibilities and apart from your little group of friends. Um, you don't involve yourself with world affairs because why would you? Why does it bother? Why does it matter? You probably have a decent house. You probably drive a decent car. Your kids are probably fairly well educated. You're probably not, you know, because you don't need to be. And it's just, just lovely. It really is. Now, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to leave. This is this is crazy. Jesus. Doberman! <laughs> it's like, what? Doberman? No, it's not. It's not Doberman. Oh, I love it, man. There's nothing more that I love than seeing weird white ladies um, shouting and screaming at random people just for the sake of it. So the next one, what else do we have here? Uh, 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 uh. We have supposedly some congresswoman called, what is his name? Mo Brooks from Alabama decides to tell the crowd to kick ass on whether or not they're ready to take. Do you know what's that? Um, whether or not they want to give their blood and lives to Trump. Obviously, you know, it's not a really good idea to do so, but let's see what he has to say regarding this. Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. I bet he won't be doing it, though. Right, all these people who have basically 
condemned a whole group of you know protesters to a life full of misery are now nowhere to be found that you know that the fbi are basically going around to everyone's homes you know i saw some images and clips of, of fbi officers at airports um you know near or around dc arresting anybody that looked familiar it's just an absolute shit of a situation and look but here's this you know middle-aged pensioner in some khakis and a rain jacket telling you to kick ass Now, our ancestors sacrificed their blood, their sweat, their tears, their fortunes, and sometimes their lives to give us, their descendants, an America that is the greatest nation in world history. So I have a question for you. Are you willing to do the same? Are you? That's the most important question. My answer is yes. Louder. Are you willing to? Oh, I, I just realized he's got a fire Pelosi hat on. So he's got the same red hat because I guess, you know, why not? It's on brand. If you're a Republican, you've got to kind of go with the with the sort of like um, the brand color, the, the, the design template or whatever it's called. What's that wanky thing people say at, uh, at work all the time on brand? What's that? What did that cunt of a manager tell me that time um, on brand? I don't know. The, you know what I'm talking about. So he's got that. He's got a hat like that and it says fire Pelosi. <laughs> Do what it takes to fight for America. Louder! Will you fight for America? And I guess they did fight, and they're all gonna fight for their freedom in jail. Epic, epic end to an epic, epic story. Continuing on, we've got another one. We've got oh yeah, this this is great. This is a great freak out. So for the most part, whenever you see like public uh, politicians, for the most part, people associated with either party on US TV going back and forth with a TV host. It's always very shouty, shouty. Like there's always a lot of kind of unnecessary bickering of a little minutia of things. There's rarely a moment where they just ask a straight up question, or they're basically made to look like a fool just through just pure um, ease of use of the English language. And we tend to do that a bit better here in in the UK, which is why our politicians are usually a bit better about. They're usually quicker and cleverer about not being caught up slipping. Right? They're usually good at ev evading. Quite like say what you want about Boris Johnson, but he's probably an expert at kind of not answering a question but still talking for a good minute or two. Right? He's kind of clever at doing that. Most politicians have that ability, but he's probably the best. He'll kind of start off like he's about to answer it, then as he trails on to about minute to about forty four seconds onwards, it just goes into another tangent, and he ends by just not saying anything. And he's looking at him, thinking, "You didn't answer my question." He's like yes i did and you're like no he didn't yes i did and then you're like oh, okay cool so this is a similar sort of thing right there's this um young lady who i guess is associated with um the republican party what's her name here her name is erin elmore i'm assuming she's like a tv presenter because she's got that kind of hot republican tv presenter look where she's either they're either brunette or they're or they're blonde and they have very striking facial features minimal makeup and they've got that kind of weird face that they do isn't it <coughs> Right, that sort of like sucky dim thing, and that weird curly hair bang thing going on down their shoulders. But let's hear how she kind of responds to being, you know, um, essentially put on skates by a British <laughs> news presenter. Let's watch it now. About uh, Article uh, uh, Amendment Twenty Five of the Constitution, uh, do you uh, feel that uh, uh, this president is fit to serve even for another few days? And classic Republican sort of like you know background she's got that nondescript bookshelf with books that don't look like they've ever been taken out of there take, taken off the shelf at any moment in time they're all sort of like amazing hardcover thick bibles of books so uh, what are they they're probably just props for the most part but let's hear what she's saying anyway how she replies i think the fitness that we should worry about is that of joe biden under the 25th amendment we know that he stumbles on his words incessantly. Good he spin. appears to be in the early stages of Alzheimer's, perhaps dementia, having lived with two grandparents with it. So imagine she's she's basically being quite presumptuous about um, Joe Biden's, uh, you know, mental state of well-being. Right. She's been a little bit insulting. Right. For the most part, a few, you know, regardless of what you think. Right. And then hear how she replies when the British journalist then says something mildly insulting back to her. It's very apparent to me to see. So I think if we're going to start talking about the 25th Amendment, let's be very careful what happens next. <laughs> look, look, I, I just got to put it to you finally. I know you're in <laughs> Jupiter, Florida, but I think many British viewers in particular will think you are living on another very strange 
planet which has lost touch uh, <laughs> with uh, right and wrong and political morality, what would you say to them? <laughs> well, your quippy one-liners don't hurt me very much. And what I tell you is 70 plus a million Americans <laughs> voted for President Trump. And those are people just like me who have family that has served in the military, who paid for... That's weird, isn't it, right? Whenever, you, whenever someone says something like, um, I, I don't mean to be mean, they're going to be mean. Um, your your one line didn't hurt me. It really did hurt them. Um, I'll tell you what, they're definitely not going to tell you what. Like, it's, there's always like an. It's always like whenever you declare something, it's always the opposite of what you declare. Like, I'm really, I'm gonna be honest. You're not being honest, right? <laughs> like, it's a clear indication of the complete opposite of how you're actually feeling. People will do it all the time. I wonder why that is. Everything that we've ever earned in our life, I wasn't handed anything by anyone and i am an american <laughs> What's that got who has traveled anything? all over the world and respects great britain and respects australia and respects every corner of our world i am the person who supports those who fight our wars and pay our taxes so for you to call me anything <laughs> anything less than a proper god-fearing god-loving american who loves this country and loves our flag is shameful and disgusting <laughs> I love when they get really passionate and then they kind of evoke emotion to try and make you feel shame because you probably put them in a bit of a corner. It's like, look, this is politics, isn't it? They're all scumbags on either side of the either side of the flipping political, you know, um corridor that you're fooling. Whether you wear a blue tie or red bat or a red tie, they're not looking after your best interests. They're you know, incredibly selfish, conniving, backstabbing people who have essentially got a bit of a power trip, right? They're not in office to serve the pop the populace, they're in office to line their pockets and to boost their own egos. So when they enter into this weird sparring competition with the only people who can kind of call them out, think about it. Politicians politicians rarely get called out in public because they basically insulate themselves from the public discourse there have been some occasions where you've seen some politicians in america at restaurants i saw that portland mayor get heckled or something where he was sitting in an outdoor restaurant somewhere but usually they're pretty smart about how they move or they move in only certain circles so they do avoid a lot of the pushback that regular people would get when they're just moving around town so when they get a bit of pushback from a flipping news presenter who you know for the most part some could argue is part of a psyop up as well. It's like, relax. You know, it is what it is. That's the game. That's, that's, that's what you sign up for. What can you do? Okay, Aaron Elmore, well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> that's a good way to end it. Okay, Aaron. Whatever you say, darling. You told me you're not, you told me you weren't triggered and then you showed me you're triggered. Absolute top girl. Absolute top girl. Okay, move on. What else I want to talk to you about here? Moving on, another topic. Yes, so this is a new one. This is from this is courtesy of BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed News shared the following: An 18-year-old saw her mum, aunt, and uncle in a DC video, so she named them. So I'm assuming that her mum and uncle were at the mum, aunt, and uncle were at the uh, Capitol building protest, and this 18-year-old decided to basically fob in her parents to the authorities. Now, just from looking at the headline alone, I would say just off the bat, before I read the actual article. It shouldn't be um, too far-fetched for me to say you shouldn't fob in your family, regardless of their political leanings, ever. Especially anything to do with politics. You know, it, it gets a little bit sketchy when you say, oh, should you snitch on your parents if they attempt, if they kill somebody, rob a bank? I don't know, whatever. Do something nonsy with kids. That goes that goes some, that goes goes a whole different, different territory. It's probably a story uh, topic for another day. But when it comes to politics, when it comes to saying something a little bit... Um, discriminatory something a little bit racist at home behind the closed doors right something a little bit classist whatever it may be i think that's just part and parcel of existing in a family you're gonna have people within your family who have very odd um world views and part of the beauty of being in a family is that you love them regardless of that and part of the training that you get from loving them, regardless of what their political opinions is, is that when you go out into the real world, it equips you to not be so triggered when somebody says, I like wearing a red tie, not a blue tie, because you already had a lot to deal with back home. But I think nowadays, because everyone's got this incessant need to share everything with their family and have them accept who I am, like, you know, guys in their mid 30s transitioning and coming out to their conservative African parents and then getting upset that they don't accept them. It's like, what are you doing? 
Do you need to live that existence with your family? Can you just do it on your own? Do you really need to kind of declare to your parents at the age of 45 that you love to, you know, get up to whatever you love to get up to on the weekend? I think they're probably aware of your, you know, orientation. They probably just would rather pretend it doesn't exist. And when they're ready to accept it, they accept it. But this constant need to have all of everybody in your family to be, to move to the beat of your own drum, especially in politics. Forget, don't get me wrong. Coming out to your parents might be a whole different thing, right? Whole other issues go in there. I'm not gay. I'm not from the LGBT community. So I don't know what actually goes on there. So there's a lot more tied to the whole aspect of coming out than just the idea of declaring your sexual preference. I'm, a, I'm aware of that. Cool. Put that to one side. Politics wise, really you're gonna you're gonna not talk to your family members because they're tories you're not gonna talk to your family members because they're republican like how immature are you like half of the country more than most more likely than not votes that way anyway so how how are you inoculating yourself from cancelling your parents when you have no idea what your manager voted for what your colleague voted for or what the person that serves you the flipping subway sandwich at lunchtime voted for you have no idea half the country voted for these people they're not a silent minority they are you know part of the populace that you live with they are your brothers and sisters you have to exist with them in the same world why would you fob them in it makes absolutely no sense unless you saw a video of them at the dc capitol building legitimately hanging a family of a family of you know of black people buy a noose in front of the building and then stoning them as as they kind of struggle for their last bits of breath cool maybe fob them in there but just for simply being there and wearing a hat right and screaming out flipping QAnon conspiracies at the top of their lungs shouldn't really matter it shouldn't they should just that should just be oh those are my crazy family members they're a bit nuts so in it let's just keep it moving but anyway, I digress. Let's get on to the actual article itself. So this, I guess, is the young lady that's 18. I'm assuming so, because she looks very young. Let's consume here. Um, Helena Duke, 1840, was odd when her mum shut off her location on her phone tracking app that they shared earlier this week. Her mum, Teresa Duke, had told her vaguely that she was taking Helena's aunt for a procedure. But Helena suspected that her Trump-supporting mum may have secretly travelled to Washington, D.C. for a delusional last-ditch stop to still rally. Of course. Now, there we have it. She knew... She's aware that her mom supports Trump and she doesn't. It's same. I had the same sort of feeling, ill feeling when you remember that trend on TikTok for a while where kids were basically, I think it was during the Black Lives Matter protest, they secretly recalled themselves arguing with their parents about, you know, Black Lives Matter and whether or not they agree with the slogan, whether or not they think the protests are just, whether or not they think, you know, whatever it may be. And it's just a pointless, pro pointless debate because more often than not, your parent, regardless of where they lean politically, they're going to be a little bit more conscious of what it means and the negative effects and the uh, yeah the negative effects of burning down a building such as you know a, a flipping car auto dealership local one in the area a fast food chain in an effort to kind of broad broaden your message they know that it's basically counterproductive but when you're a kid when you're younger that's probably usually all that kind of beef vendetta anarchism thing probably resonates more with you you have this weird warped worldview where you think if you burn everything down people are going to start listening to you and that's not how it happens right you have to kind of do things in a more tactical way you have to do things with a little bit more consideration with other people's feelings so when those kids are having those arguments and debates what you're basically seeing is a generational gap you're seeing a kid not understanding at all where their parents' worldviews come from because they're not that they, they haven't lived enough, they haven't experienced enough, and of course, on the other side of the thing, you're seeing the parent not understand at all where the kids' worldview is because they have no, rem they don't really remember how their mind was when they were 18 because there's so much has happened between then and now. So this is it's the kind of same thing, and I didn't really feel good when I saw those videos either. Anyway, we continue, we digress. On Thursday morning, Helena's cousin had sent her a viral video of a physical encounter on the streets of DC, filmed on Tuesday, the night before the Capitol was raided. Watching the clip, Helena identified her mum, her aunt Annie Lorenz, and her uncle Richard Lorenz. Oh, Lorenz, is that Taylor Lorenz's family? You know that um, social media snitch on Twitter? Is that her? Maybe. <laughs> As part of a group of white people confronting a black woman who had hit Therese um, in the face after she had tried to grab them. Her quote, my initial reaction was like, oh my gosh, I was right. I was actually right about them being there. Helena told BuzzFeed News. It was very surreal because it was an insane video, first of all. And then it was a relevant um, revelation that, oh my God, that's my mother. That's her. So she's actually talking to BuzzFeed News too. This girl is insane. Don't snitch on your parents, people, please. 
Oh my God. A black woman in a video had tweeted that a group of five people were harassing her a long time um, and had tried to take her belongings from her hands in her pocket. She declined to comment on the incident to BuzzFeed News without legal representation. Helena's family members did not press response to emails. So the black woman that's getting assaulted refuses to talk to the media. Yet the white girl, who's the daughter of the person doing the assaulting, who's at home, is snitching on her parents. Make it make sense. Stunned to see her mum, Helena decided to tweet about the video and identified her family members and there's the people in it. Um, she says, hi mum, remember the time you told me um, I shouldn't go to BLM protest, but they um, could get violent. This is you, she wrote. So she did this is you to her mum. This you? You know that whole thing people do on, on social media? Oh my God. Horrendous to see. Um, Helena's viral tweets had hit a nerve with many of her other Americans who had become distanced from loved ones and once Trump's era due, um, in the Trump era due to them um, changing politics or becoming caught up in the queue on mass delusion. Now, I understand this is a thing in America where legitimately families have been completely... It's the same thing in the UK, right? We had we we have it here with Brexit and the Tories. There's obviously a rift. There's obviously a rift in families that's, you know, in some respects is maybe COVID is going to heal the rift because, you know, I think most people on both sides of the political aisle can see, you know, no one's really doing a good job of handling COVID. Maybe it might happen. Who knows? But that rift that's been caused with Trump might be part of his lasting legacy, isn't it? The fact that he was able to be a president of the United States and not only alienate people based on the fact that he wears a red tie, but also alienate entire groups of people and families and shit. And the, the bad thing is because of how it's ending now, it doesn't seem like there's going to be ever... Do you ever see... That's the thing. Because if you're willing to fob, fob in your mum now, do you ever see a scenario where they're suddenly going to live under a shared household and just tolerate each other's different worldviews? Would that ever happen? It probably won't, innit? it? Because if you're willing to fob in your mum now when essentially your party has quote-unquote won, what are you willing to do later on down the line when you feel like maybe they're being dangerous and saying crazy things? Do you think she, do you think she reported her mum's tweets on social media too? Imagine that. Your own child is reporting your tweets to get you suspended or banned. It continues here. It said, before President Trump was elected, she was a Democrat for the majority of her life, Helena said. And then I don't know what happened. Something switched in her brain and she went through a very dramatic change to very far right. As you're free to do, right? It's a whatever. It's politics. Who gives a shit? Why should it matter? And again, you're her child. You're 18 years old. Does she live at home? If your mum, I'm sorry, but if your mum is the one giving you flipping toast and jam in the morning and washing your underpants and giving you allowance money, you have no opinion. You have no right to say anything about her political leanings whatsoever until you step out of your uh, out of that crib and earn money for yourself. That's my essential rule. She continues. Um, she says she received a lot of direct messages from people sharing similar experiences. She quotes, I think it's kind of makes it, it makes me feel better knowing other people have gone through the same thing. I obviously feel very sad that they have to go through it um, too, but I'm not alone in that we're, in that they're not alone. The unrest and violence of the Capitol on Wednesday has driven a deeper wedge into an already strange relationship between Trump supporters and those around them. Many have spoken out about um, arguing with loved ones who blame Antifa for violence. The FBI has said there's no evidence that anti-fascist activists played a role. Of course, I actually want to chew it and talk about his shit. Um, it continues here. People who have family members at the Capitol have talked about their anger and disappointment. Robin Sweet, a woman whose dad stormed the Capitol with a mob, was uh, arrested, told BuzzFeed previously, I'm completely ashamed and disgusted of him. <sighs> Don't talk to the media disparagingly about people that are in your family don't ever do it it's already bad talking to the media regardless don't ever talk to journalists they're always going to twist your words and make you seem like a complete lunatic but don't especially talk to journalists when they are asking you to make statements regarding your family members have some self-respect it's un it continues it's unclear if Henderson's family's members were at the Capitol on Wednesday then thousands when thousands of Trump supporters inside by him and descended on the building to try and overturn the election that he lost five people died as a result of the assumption that uh, let's continue um local and federal law enforcement agencies have asked for help identifying the writers again don't identify writers either in a screenshot text message reviewed by BuzzFeed News, Helena asked her mum where she was on Wednesday night, but did not get a response. The next day, she shared text message screenshots between her mum and the journalist. Oh my God, Helena, what are you doing? That's your mum. Holy shit. Said here, the next day after Teresa text saying she was at home, Helena simply responded, how's your nose? Please call me to talk to me if you really want to know her mum wrote. Her mum and aunt, whom she said um, was close to the relationship until the breakdown in recent years, have sent her pleas and threats to remove her tweets. 
We are not proud of the things we went in DC. And he said in a text review at BuzzFeed, I know you're upset, but putting us in danger isn't going to solve anything. Please, I'm begging you to remove it. Of course, and she didn't remove it. So she fobbed her parents, not only to a journalist, she also obeyed them up on Twitter, sent an amount, you know, un, unspecified amount of trolls to their account to harass them. And now she's talking to the press. <sighs> I honestly don't think I did anything wrong in the situation. Helena said, of course you don't. You absolute dickhead. Helena said she's upset at her family members' actions and the family's hypocrisy. And she said that when her mother discovered last year that she participated in Black Lives Matter March, she told her she was no longer welcomed in her home. Okay, she told me she thought Black Lives Matter was a violent organization and they would incite violence. I felt almost heartbroken, however, over how they viewed the world and how skewed it was and how they would um, do this and allow me to express my views. Um, but showing showing that they can act in such a horrible way is just really appalling to me. Um, I'm honestly very disappointed to be part of this family that is so just very not welcoming and supportive. I don't feel very safe being part of this. What is it? Is it because she has a black boyfriend or something and she's riding so hard for Black Lives Matter only in the first place? That's a little bit odd anyway to begin with, you know? Anyone, I don't know, maybe, maybe just me speaking as a black person, but any white person that's like super hardcore, you know, Black Lives Matter and willing to flipping abandon their family for a flipping organization that's dubious to say the least, even amongst black people, that, you know, it's either you love rum too much or you have a little bit of a screw loose. But Jesus Christos, man, one absolute psychopath this girl is. Why would you do that? Earning earning likes online and virtue signaling points by fobbing in your parents isn't a way to go. Honestly, I guarantee it isn't a way to go. But again, maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below if you if you would fob in your parents um because of their political beliefs. Um I hope you wouldn't, but let me know if you would in the chat and in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. Uh, next on the list here, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously during lockdown, I've been getting into different things to kind of occupy my mind, keep me distracted, and obviously keep me entertained. And I happened to stumble upon this podcast called Red Scare last year. It's been it's, about, it's been about a year since I've listened to it, so I thought I'd give a little bit of a review of my um review of the pod and what I'll kind of glean and get from it. So essentially red uh, scare podcast is a culture comedy podcast it's here according to google a uh, human podcast founded in march 2018 hosted by dasha uh, whatever her surname is and anna whatever her surname is the show has been associated with dirt bag left and has been described as a cut as a critic of feminism capitalism from deep inside the culture they've spawned so essentially they're sort of like without being mean they're art hoes that put together a really cool podcast it's sort of like the cool hipster girls that you might have met in a williamsburg warehouse rave back in the day or what's that other place everyone used to go at is it the ba the bowery what's the other one as well that was kind of the alibi new york um is it max fish right those kind of girls that would have hanged around those kind of places they would have been friends with um jason deal they would have been friends with Aaron Bondaroff. They would have been friends with that girl, that woman that writes that amazing art blog where she posts pictures of her going to art exhibitions. I think it's New York City blog or something, Art City or something. But, you know, they would have been in that kind of crew. So they're pretty cool. And of course, you know, they're super big fans of uh, Camille Paglia and all that good stuff. Um, what's his name? The guy that's always kind of spitting. Um, Zizek, whatever his name is, right? That those kind of intellectuals and it's pretty cool I, I have to be honest it's a good way to sort of unplug from the daily rigors of um, life they obviously offer you a different perspective and the fact that they're sort of self-owned they've got a hell of a lot of um backers on patreon i think they they earn about i'm gonna say a lot on patreon it doesn't matter i'm gonna click on it but it's a lot of money on patreon right in the thousands so they're able to be a little bit more freer with what they say they don't have sponsorships or anything there's no ad reads in between no mid rolls no stupidness of that and they just kind of you know review cultural um stuff that's happening in the zeitgeist whether it's a latest matt taibi article of some crazy thing someone written in the vox or something like that and again, um, loads of really good um, recommendations in terms of TV series and movies to watch. I love what they do, all that sort of stuff. They have really good movies, uh, reviews that they sometimes put behind a paywall. Sometimes they're free. Um, I think it's recorded twice a week, but I just listen to it whenever it's out. I don't really keep a schedule of what they're doing. Um, and yeah, it's nice to hear. I think the only criticism I have with it, you, it takes a while to get used to the flipping uh, vocal fry the, uh, um, and the sort of like um, ambivalence and, uh, you know, that kind of, it's a quintessential hipster attitude where every, they're kind of over everything, but they have an opinion about everything. Um, Anna is sort of the one that's always um, the girl with the hot takes. That's the girl with the brunette, um, the dark hair. Um, 
Uh, Dasher is obviously Dasher makes me laugh because towards the end of the podcast whenever it hits about an hour she has like a little clock inside of her that makes her go tired and she starts yawning and so I think that's it and they're getting really tired and so, you know they kind of make this joke that they don't really like working hard which is funny um, I didn't watch it I didn't listen to it when this third girl was in she was I think uh, one of the producers but I think they had a bit of a falling out and she went around her own way oh they did a runway show I didn't know that when did they walk a show is that um is that Art House Public School what is that what's that show is it for doesn't matter. Okay, they did a runway show. I didn't know that. But anyway, um, they're cool girls. I'm a big fan of them. Again, the podcast show is pretty interesting. I recommend you check it out. Red Scare Podcast, available on the platforms you need to be on. And they've obviously got a Patreon too. They should definitely jump on because I'm sure you'll get a lot of good stuff. They, they did a really cool t-shirt. Um, an ISIS t-shirt that I kind of regret not getting a hold of myself, man. It looked flipping sick. Um, and that completely sold out. I think, yeah, this is it here. This is Dasha wearing a t-shirt here. As you can see, they don't, you know, they, uh, they're big fans of intermittent fasting over the years because they're hella, hella slim, which is uh, funny as well because uh, you feel like some of, the, some of the criticisms they get online from people does stem from them being a little bit aesthetically um, obsessed, right? How they present themselves and what they put on their social media feed. Um, then they don't really have a face for radio. You know, if that, that needs to be said. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, just standard. You know, white girls from New York, but but they don't. Re they're not like you know. They don't look like some of those. You know, some of those sort of like um crazy lefty sort of podcast girls, right? Where they essentially kind of uh <laughs> they're kind of ugly. You know, you know what I mean, right? They're kind of ugly. These girls aren't you know typically ugly but they're not you know you know you know what i mean so i think they get a little bit criticism from that but i enjoy the podcast man i'm a big fan of it i love i love what they do i love the topics they talk about again um very interesting um range of topics uh they made me kind of um like leonard Dunham a lot more they obviously made me like um lana del rey too a little bit more with obsession with them too so it's a cool thing and obviously i'm a big fan of their logo um the artwork cover of their podcast is pretty cool it's maybe one of the best ones i've seen for a while it's basically a lady bending over with a tramp stamp say red scare with a fong being ups um a fong being exposed and of course some topics here regarding caroline calloway our favorite regular white girl out there but yeah it's a good podcast man. i recommend you check it out it's really really interesting um red scare podcast available on all the platforms that you know where podcasts exist jump on it get involved support the ladies they're recording a pod and all that good stuff next on the list what else do we have oh yeah man let's talk about this because this is annoying we need to clear the air with this one so obviously i reported the other day about this alleged um kim and kanye breakup it doesn't really matter it's none of our business if they are going through a breakup you know especially when you keep bear in mind how big their family is um how much business has to be done associated with their brand name the last thing they need is public scrutiny and their attention being brought upon you know such a troubling moment that they're going through especially considering the amount of backlash they get in general from ever popping their head out of the parapet right it's just a you know it's a bit of a hard time for them going through in general so having everyone's eyes upon them probably isn't helping situation to make matters worse some flipping donor of a girl decided to invent this rumor that supposedly jeffree star was um hooking up with kanye and that is what basically led to the divorce which you know at the time sounded absolutely batshit crazy but because it's celebrities and because it's covid nothing sounds insane anymore so people kind of ran with the story i reported on it a little bit obviously i didn't believe it just because it just sounds too insane and now it's being basically alleged or it's being brought or it's been, no it's not being alleged the girl that actually flipping started the rumor herself basically came out and said oh it was all a lie i faked the entire thing for clout so i could get attention back on myself and then having dug a bit deeper into the topic the girl in mind who actually started the flip and rumor in the first place is that girl that got famous or went viral in the beginning of the pandemic for licking a toilet seat on an airplane do you remember that story do you remember that do you remember that that's the girl so i should have paid more attention to the flipping stuff so that was the girl flipping started the rumor and now she's coming out and basically saying nah it's not true i faked the entire thing one absolute piece of crap so this is the article here from deaf noodle so the following desperate for clap goblins uh, part one Ava Louise admits she had completely fabricated the Kanye West and Jeffree Star rumors after she was exposed by a friend Ava later claimed she made 15,000 free days since the scandal broke like where did they make these women like are these the same sort of young ladies who go to, do they go to the same school as the other young lady that Helena girl that fobbed in her parents because they vote for Trump is that from the same is that are those kind of kids brought up 
around the same amount of people is that media is that culture itself what makes a young lady decide to do that to sit at home record a tiktok rec you know putting out uh false stories about celebrities in an effort to what ruin their marriage and destroy their family like who raises these people and here's her talking about it i thought was my friend thought they could expose me did they know so she's complaining right so she's kind of get, trying to get ahead of the story that her friend is basically going to expose the fact that she made up the rumor completely and she's acting like she's the victim in this jesus christ oh i was obviously going to expose myself because what i did was just too legendary you know really not even getting sued i made this entire scandal up there is literally not one bit of truth to jesus anything i have christ. said i just tricked the entire world into talking about me again because i was on a lot of adderall and board and that's on being con we all had fun though didn't we no we didn't have fun you piece of shit and again it's social started too because you think this is going to be enough to kind of get you back into the um to get you back into everybody's good graces or something or to basically long to base i don't know long, no, yeah to extend your short-lived run as some sort of um public figure but if anything we've learned so far you if you wear people's um, attention down enough and you put out enough sh bullshit out there people are just going to be over you whatever you have to say and you're going to have to get more outlandish in your efforts and the more outlandish you get in your efforts the more detrimental it is to your overall relevancy so she's in a lose lose game here because now that we know that she's a complete liar right now that we know that she's uh an insane person we're never going to take anything she says again and if you're ever, anything any, we're never going to take anything she says again seriously even though we shouldn't in the first place because who the fuck is this girl she sits there filming herself with half of her face rolling her eyes with her lips that look like she's been stung by a bumblebee we shouldn't be listening to anything she says in the beginning but now we're definitely not going to listen to it going forward because we know you're a liar god almighty man and another video here where she came she made all that money which again I am very dubious about. She lied about the rumor. She's probably lying about the money she made as well. Let's go. She says here. Hearing how back. much money, yeah. hearing how much money I made off of like this whole Jeffrey Kanye whatever, Kanye, whatever stuff I did. That's the thing you have to get used to. Listen to Red Scare. It's just that vocal fry. Once you get past the vocal fry, obviously Red Scare girls are far more accomplished and interesting people to listen to than this absolute donut. But you just have to get past that vocal fry, and once you get past it, it's fine. Fifteen thousand dollars in the past three days. Yeah, sure. Fifteen thousand dollars in three days. And imagine how far that fifteen thousand dollars is gonna go get her in terms of um covering her legal fees when she eventually gets sued. That's gonna be glorious to see how um much her life gets destroyed at the back of this stupid rumor that got her what five minutes of social media attention so so short-sighted so short-sighted and then on the other side of the track we have mr jeffrey star who bloody uh poured gasoline on the rumors put out pictures of himself and then had captions of like get ready for sunday service liking certain tweets that people were sharing and just generally being messy now he has a bit of an excuse because he's had a long-standing feud with the kardashians from what i read online done a bit of research he's always had a bit of a being their bonnet with them i think it stems from the kylie jenner cosmetic stuff i don't know what's happening there it's loads of girl stuff that i'm not really involved in but he has some sort of you know there's some reasoning behind that but still now he's coming out i'm assuming because there's been pressure behind the scenes and he essentially is walking back the rumor and explain you know and explaining it away as being stupid but at the time he was also feeding into himself pieces of shit these people man online like horrible horrible people in it but they, that's the thing about social media I've, I've, i realized the bigger the public figure the more um horrendous of a human they are but people don't seem to be captivated with it is it is it like a long-running tv is, is it is it like a long-running um car crash you're watching unfold day in day out because i don't really understand how these people can maintain or keep an audience for that long of a time when you know that they've demonstrated various times across their career that they're just garbage humans i don't know how this possible i really don't but anyway it's a deaf noodle says breaking news that will most definitely change your life obviously being sarcastic says jeffrey star debunks rumors that he and kanye are dating jeffrey says tiktoker who made up the rumor is lying jeffrey claims he has never hung out with kanye kim and or kanye also said rumors are not true so here it is why is jeffrey lynn Number three trending. I woke up out of bed, Chris, and I'm like, huh? And the headline reads, Jesus Christ. Kanye West might be sleeping with Jeffree Star. <laughs> I 
I can't. I can't. And then I'm like, how do we even get to this moment? Like, how how would that even be made up? Because we both live in, in the same Wyoming. state, right? Whatever. So I guess some girl. What uh, do you mean how? Weren't you feeding into the rumors by liking pictures and posting up pictures of yourself with flipping um, suggestive captions? Like, what is wrong with these people, man? This drive me fucking insane. I made up a whole lie on TikTok and it went viral um, where she insinuates Kanye and Kim are getting divorced because a big male beauty influencer uh, is sleeping with him. Oh, she wanted views. <laughs> so I just woke up just trying to live my life and I'm like, huh, this is so weird. And it's such a it's such an epically timed rumor for him too. I wonder if all this is like a psyop and a um, covert attempt to basically divert attention away from the numerous accounts of people allegedly being paid off um, by Jeffree Star for some very dubious and very serious allegations, which you can Google yourself. I wonder, because it's not... It must not be a coincidence that whenever he gets into some sort of crazy scandal that he never replies about, right? He never comes out and, and kind of dismisses those statements. Um, he kind of just sits quiet um, in his uncancelable mansions across the United States and just keeps it moving. But Jesus Christ, he's such a horrible human. But I guess because he's so interesting as a person, right? From the business, from the look, from the drama, from everything else that goes around him, people just can't keep their eyes off him, innit? That's just a part of it. But I don't know, man, like... It's just, it's just odd. I don't really get it. I'm really trying to understand, like, what is it about these people who are demonstrably horrendous people that people seem to be interested in and don't want to take their eyes off of? What is it about it? What is it? What is it? What is it? I have people, t like, texting me, all these news people, like, what do you have to say to about this? And I'm like, about what? What? I'm single. I'm not sleeping with anyone. Like, this is so weird. So, um, <laughs> Jeffree Star after leaving Kim's house. Look at this y'all this is so stupid <gasps> what since when did you learn all those moves <laughs> i mean that was me escaping from louis vuitton but that that wasn't <laughs> this is so weird so uh, it's 2021 it's january 6th and allegedly uh, i'm sleeping with kanye let me just say this one time for any news outlet uh i like very tall men. Me and Kanye uh, have never hung out, and this whole thing is really funny. So, I guess if this is the start to my new year, happy new year. Garbage humans circulating garbage rumors about garbage things for garbage people. That is how our 2021 is starting. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. What else do we have here going on? Da, 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 da. Um, actually, let's put this. Let's take this down. Uh, uh, uh. What else is next year? Yeah, this is an interesting one. So let's go through this. So this is courtesy of TMZ. Some kid called Tony Lopez from the Hype House is being sued for sexual battery and alleged solicitating of minors. And it got me thinking in general about a topic that I've kind of wanted to be I wanted to discuss a little bit, which is um, what is it with all these um, live streamers, YouTubers, podcasters, um, what else would you call these kids? Um, influencers getting caught or being accused of being nonsense. Like, what is it? And it got me thinking about like whether it might be a, a condition. Because I'm not too sure about Tony Lopez kid because he looks like a typical sort of TikTok kid. But I wonder if a lot of it has to do with the fact that most of these people that make it online you know, in order to make it online, you have to dedicate a lot of time to create content and to, you know, put it out there, distribute it um, amongst your social media channels. So there probably isn't a lot of time to like play football with kids outside, hang out, play basketball and just whatever. And do what kids do. Um, you don't really have that time because you're always planning and making content. So if that's the case, then you probably don't have enough time. You don't have enough experience talking to whoever you're attracted to. So usually all your sort of... um sexual stimulation whatever it may be called must come from the attention that you get online that's how maybe you replace it and then that may be the reason why a lot of these people get themselves in situations where they're just hungry and ready to receive the attentions of anyone and anyone regardless of their age that's the only way i can explain it because it just makes no sense why somebody like a Tony Lopez, who is admittedly one of the biggest, uh, bigger TikTokers out there, millions of followers, you know, well liked. He does all those flipping videos that everyone flipping loves to do, that sort of shit, doing all the faces. There's no reason why he should be solicitating minors, apart from the fact that either he has no experience with girls 
or he's purposely going after young kids because they're young and impressionable, which of course should be enough of a reason to throw him in a jail and lock away the key. And throw away the key, sorry. Enough of a reason, right? So this is, of course, an article from TMZ. This is the following. And again, incredibly bizarre people. And he's, he's really popular too, for the most part. And this story has been going on for a while. And he hasn't lost any followers. He hasn't, got, he hasn't got kicked out of his hype house thing. I think he left the hype house recently. I'm not too sure. I read somewhere. Um, but for the most part, nothing's been affected by the story prior. So I'm, I wonder what's going to happen now that it's, it's become a legal issue, you know. But you know how you know how companies are, and at the moment it becomes a legal issue, they will start backing around and, and pretending they have morals. But when it's not a legal issue, they're willing to kind of you know do the dance and hang around with you because they they are um, in, loving the engagement and the click through rate that you bring to their products or services. But anyway, I digress. Here's the article. Tony Lopez is one of the popular members of TikTok's Hype House. Use social media to groom and have sex with two teenage girls, at least according to an explosive new lawsuit. But he denies the allegations which is insane. Um, the underage girls um, suing under the aliases HL Doe and CH Doe both claimed that 21-year-old Lopez began communicating with them via text and social media despite knowing they were minors and say he tried to coerce them into meeting for sexual encounters. So obviously, he's a, he's a nonce. That's not a way to kind of go about that one. HL alleges that N Lopez first lured her away from her friends on January the 4th, 2020 and engaged in unlawful sexual acts with her, including oral and vaginal sex. In the suit, the teen claims she told him she was 16 before that encounter but later admitted she was only really a 15 yikes mate yikes 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 this is this is more so i wouldn't say this is more so this is this is probably a clearer case of grooming than all the others i've seen because usually you'd imagine a lot of these guys have very young fan bases anyway so you're purposely going out of your way to kind of draw upon young and impressionable kids that you know you can kind of you know you don't have to work hard like it's gross to say it but you don't you don't you don't, you don't have to work hard to kind of gain their attention and then once you do gain their attention you exploit it in any way you you need that that suits your um desires um which is the height of disgustingness isn't it really making my mouth make me want to gag to be honest god damn it um even more so sorry even so she alleges that they had sex again on january 19th at his place in nevada and that lopez told her not to take any pics with her phone because he wanted to keep their relationship a secret jesus christos and of course there's a picture of all of them there there's that absolute donut the hype house manager guy and all the other, uh, yeah oh god the other accuser ch claims that she met lopez in 2020 in april when she was invited to high pass la by one of the founders thomas per two so the, uh, the 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 actual uh manager of the high pass who essentially is looking like a bit of a pimp it seems like invited an underage girl to the house knowing she was underage and knowing what those guys get up to right knowing the kind of work these guys put in behind closed doors with their stupid dances isn't it god almighty um almost immediately there's one of these guys right that works out a lot who takes steroids he's like 21 years old there's no need for you to take steroids at that, at that age really um i guess i'll say that probably it's beneficial to take steroids at that age because you're probably going to get a lot more benefits residual residual benefits from it if you taper off uh, later on in your life in it who knows but regardless they're a bit unhinged yeah they're a bit unhinged um, it continues here. She claims that they exchanged text messages and Snapchat info and Lopez, knowing she was 16, almost immediately began to take news photos or videos from her. CH alleged that Lopez sent a photo of himself with a caption, show me your boobs, and repeatedly tried to coerce her into sending spitted photos or sneaking out to meet him to have sex. She says she had declined, but according to a suit, he allegedly sent her a nude photo exposing his penis. Jesus Christos. Both girls are suing Lopez for sexual battery and emotional distress. They are also suing High Pass and its founders, including Petru and Chase Hudson, for negligence as they should um lopez told tmz these allegations are all not all true i've never sent news to these women and i didn't ask them to send me pictures at all and i certainly had not have sex with someone who told me they were underage he adds this whole thing seems to be a, like a money grab to me i'm going to fight it with every very end and i will not allow them to continue to slander my name and attack my character so he's admittedly denying it but from what i've seen so far the evidence is pretty damning you don't go to court um willy-nilly especially if you're uh, a kid around these type of people you know the negative tension is going to bring upon yourself you know the army of trolls that these kids have that will go and attack your character so if they're willing to put their name on record again it's a random alias but I pro i'm pretty sure people on the ground know who the girls are that are legend with these instances i'm pretty sure there's a lot of evidence to kind of back up their claims and again 
This Thomas guy is looking suspect as shit, man. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few, again, no, I'm not putting any bad energy out there for him, but I wouldn't be surprised if something else pops up about this guy because there's something about his face, something about his demeanor that I never liked from the moment I saw him. Maybe it's the fact that he's an older dude essentially managing or pimping out younger kids. I always kind of had a funny feeling about, but there's there's no way someone like that isn't complicit in some of the things that's going on behind closed doors. If he is, fair enough. I'm sorry for putting smart on your name, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see something else happening with this Thomas Petru guy there in the background. But yeah, hopefully that case gets sorted out sooner rather than later. Next on the list. Oh, what else do we have here? Um, what else do we have here? What else do we have here? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about that one. Let's talk about something else. What do we want to talk about? What should we want to talk about? Let's go on. Let's go on. Not this one. Hold on, bear with me a second. Just going to click through these topics because my computer is not loading that quickly right now. I'm not too sure why that is, but you know how things run sometimes. Bumba rotted, bumba wall. Not that. Let's go on for that one. Let's move on again. Let's go here. What is this one? Okay, let's go. Maybe go there. Come on, load, please, if you don't mind. Let my screen load and let you be normal. If that's the case, I want it to be normal by you. Okay, cool. Done. Got it. So, in other news that I'm still trying to get my head around because that doesn't really make no sense to me is this courtesy of hype beast nike are going to allow you to personalize your own nike dunks right nike have been on a bit of a dunk resurgence the last few months it feels like uh, was it because of the 30th anniversary whatever anniversary it is there's been a huge push from nike to kind of uh force dunks down our throats from what i've seen so far it hasn't been that effective it's only bolstered the reselling market i don't see anyone in real life wearing dunks outside of the bait ones that you see like the 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 chunky dunkies and what have I seen someone wearing recently the Travis Scott SBs but I've not really seen a huge amount of people wearing dunks the way that they're pushing them and especially when you consider the, the GRs the non-SB dunks that keep coming out I don't see them anywhere being worn I honestly don't and again I don't go out as much as I used to in the past I understand things have changed generations move on bloody blah, blah blah I might be an old head but I re honestly don't see anyone in real life wearing these shoes and I'm really interested to know whether because obviously it's, it's owned by them right it's a design shoe it's kind of you know they don't have to license it to anybody they don't have to pay anything so you can just keep running it back but why do they keep consistently trying to make dunks a thing especially when you consider the, the success of an air force one a success of an air jordan one especially the mids and you consider the success of an air max those dunks don't come anywhere near um replicating the sales the kind of legacy the love that those three models get in general because i'd assume those those three models are probably the most highest selling shoes within the nike catalog right air jordan one or jordan brand itself in general but let's say air jordan one pacific is probably the one of the most highest selling shoes within the jordan brand the air force one of course is always one of the highest selling and popular shoes i think i remember one time reading this article about air jordan ones being oh sorry is it air jordan ones yeah no uh, about air force ones being the most common shoe worn at a house robbery or something like that right i think second was like an air max 95 so they're very popular and then of course um what was the other one i said air maxes and that could be anything from an air max one to an air max 90 air max 3 whatever you want to put in there those three shoes are probably those three categories of shoes are probably the highest sellers within the nike space and then i don't know what comes after the fact they might be janowski's it might be something else who knows but this Nike dunk thing is odd because I honestly don't see... Because even when I used to work in 1948, there was an era where they had this... What was that thing called? A Nike Be True to Your School, right? Where they sort of re-retroed all of those sort of like college basketball colorway dunks. And they kind of did a flip on them. Instead of doing them in a the leather um, upper, they sort of did them in a mix of leather and suede. So the bits where the colors were and the essence on the mud garden shit on the toe box were all uh, new bucky suede color, really plush. I regret selling my... I had, a, I had a pair, but they sort of, you know... Dunks, in my opinion, sort of lose their shape. Especially if you've got wide feet, they get a bit bulbousy and weird, which is why I like Dunks, which is why I like, sorry, Jordan 1s. 
even though they're really thin on the sole, they tend to keep their kind of profile looking down a little bit better than actual dunks. I don't know why that is. But regardless, they tried a thing with the Nike Be True to Your Schools and that never really took off anywhere. And now they're doing it again. Like, honestly, the only things that sell from Nike Dunk, S or Nike Dunk are the SBs and only the ones that are super limited editions and covered in flipping glitter and, you know, dipped in paint and spray painted with flipping, you know, um, Pharrell's jizz or something. Like, normal dunks don't really sell too tough. So I'm interested to know what is the reason behind pushing this thing continuously they just don't stop so anyway it's nike id um article from hype says the following nike dunks continue to be the talk of the town not really it's engineered again not talk of the town engineered because when's the last time you see someone on the street wearing a pair of dunks tell me i see dr martins i see adidas's i see reeboks and shit i don't see anyone wearing dunks and if you do see someone wearing dunks more likely than not they got them seeded or they know someone who knows somebody. Or usually, you never ever see. You know, it's it's like seeing a. It's like whenever I've seen a girl wearing a pair of shoes, they're always very expensive, like limited edition shoes. So you know, she either works in you know within the fashion streetwear design space, or she's got a boyfriend that wants her to look like you know look like she's dripping. Do you know what I mean? But it's very rarely that you'll just see a girl wearing cool shoes and she's a sneakerhead like you. There are they do exist. Don't get me wrong. I know they've got staff in Foot Patrol and all these kind of shops. These kind of you know female sneakerhead types that do that whole dance thing where they're sitting down but when you do see them you know you know the type what i mean so these dunk people like where are they and again you might see skaters wearing them but again most of these guys are probably on the nike skateboarding team so it's i, I don't know i find it very odd it continues here they continue to be a talk of the town um, in its ever growing amount of collaborative dealings as well as the resurgence of the classic two-tone colorways and now the ever famous silhouette is adding to its momentum by finally being lord loaded by the nike b by you platform okay so it's not called nike id anymore why is it called nike by you anyway for sneaker aficionados who were around during the nike id days the swooshes personalization platform before nike by you it's the same thing though you just click colors and you change them nike and these kind of rebrands i wonder how long it took them to find to come up with the name by you by you sounds like some african basketball player no Nikkei Bayou. Anyway, it continues. Um, this will be very familiar to you as you have an option to dress up the basketball turned lifestyle model with some smooth pebbled leather uppers. In addition to choosing between a wide variety of colors, there is a catch here, though. However, and it's the inability to recreate any two. Oh, inability to create any two-tone be true to school inspired colorways such as the Kentucky. Da, da, da. This makes sense considering the other silhouettes that have previously dropped by a Nike by your umbrella have forbade customers from designing popular colorways. Interesting. So they purposely stop you from. Um, recreating colorways from shoes that they're about to put out so not only do nike refuse to make enough shoes to for anyone to buy they also put in place a structure for you to buy shoes via the sne nike sneakers app that is essentially a lottery even if you have the money you don't have the chance to buy the shoes they then go out of their way to stop you from redesigning shoes that you might have missed out on on the actual legitimate nike id platform but in the moment you try and do your own custom shoe and sell them, they try and come down on you like a ton of bricks. Tell me that is not hypocrisy. Tell me. It continues. Despite um, this, not that the room to imagination still is ample. Um, here we have re recreated a few options, makeups and speak for the cherished iterations such as the unreleased um, 7-Eleven Dunks and the eBay Dunk Chicago Dunks and more. Blah, blah, blah. So people are just basically redesigning shoes that haven't been re-released on Nike ID. That is the opposite. That's the complete opposite of doing Nike ID, no? The whole point of you doing Nike ID is to kind of flex your own creativity. And of course, to give Nike free ideas because best believe if you post up a picture of your Nike ID on your social media feed and it counts a pretty decent reaction and you happen to be friends with people in the industry, they're definitely taking a look at your image, screenshotting it and then putting it into production. And guess what? You ain't seeing a cent, my G, a cent. So be very careful about where you're putting up your images of your shoes. It doesn't really matter, of course, because they're going to see it on the back end. But this whole idea about sharing your designs and collaborating, all this sort of nonsense, it's a whole point of BS. Unless your name is on the contract and they say, look, you are a designer, you're an influencer, you're going to see this. Never give these people free ideas. Never do any sort of, um, what do they call those things? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Never do... Um, consultation what they call those things where they sit you down in a circle and ask you for your ideas in the collection and you give them the best ideas they've ever heard in their life you you basically get a a, a couple of pret manger sandwiches and maybe a discount um code to shop at fucking nike town that's all you get and then they go they go in and take your learnings and apply it to their flipping outerwear and their entire collections they make a billion dollars and you don't see a cent what's it called um 
Uh, oh, you know that thing, meeting, I don't know, whatever that meeting thing is called, don't go to them thing, kids. Please avoid. Buy the shoes and design them if you want to. Your heart does desire, but don't think that you're kind of helping Nike out. If anything, you're helping them to make millions and then you're also spiting yourself and diminishing your ability to be more creative further down the line. But again, I don't know, maybe it's just me with a Nike Dunk. Let me know. Are you a fan? I'm not particularly. I think it's a bit of a dead model. I think it's getting, it works in the, it worked at a particular time. Things have moved on somewhat. The Jordan 1s are basically a better silhouette and a better model than it. The Air Force 1 is basically a, a better model than it. It's way more popular, a way more versatile shoe. And I just think the Dunks are just not going to ever be a thing. It's just one of those shoes that isn't going to take off no matter how much they try and push it. Um, just leave it alone. It's sort of re reminiscent to me when Reebok tried to like jazz up the Reebok Classic and give it all these wacky colours. It's like, no. Um, chavs and and people who wear palace and roll up their cigarettes and wear tracksuits um, with their loafers, they like Reeboks, right? Those kind of, you know, they like Reeboks. They like them in the classic white and black colorways. Give them their shoe and keep it moving. You don't need to jazz it up and make it in Nubok or add a little, you know, um, outdoor sole to the bottom of it. Like, just leave it as it is and keep it moving. Again, only my opinion, what the hell do I know? Next on the list here, what else do we have? Let's exit that. Buh, 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 buh. Buh, 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 buh. Ooh! Okay, cool. Next on the list, what else do we have here? We have this. We have some great news, amazing news, actually. One of the best pieces of news out here. Um, we have some further details uh, regarding the Tom Sachs Nike Mars Yard 2.5s that are due to come out sometime, I guess, in the next few months. Um, so far, what we've seen is that they're pushing out this sort of Nike craft wear test thing where you basically um, submit your application to be a wear tester for the shoe, give your feedback and kind of contribute to the overall makeup of the shoe, which I don't really believe. I just think it's a bit of a good exercise to kind of get people through the funnel and obviously to kind of um sell the shoe in a completely different way i think the first time they went around selling the marja that i have the 2.0s they did this whole like um fitness um body conditioning sort of thing i'm pretty sure it might have been um also a spin on a hero's journey story as well they probably added to it but they're really good with kind of providing um accessory materials to sneaker releases and making it less about the fetishization of a shoe and putting it in a perspex box and more so about people actually wearing a shoe day to day and you know uh putting it through its paces as most shoes should be and i even like the fact that they purposely um made the sole of the mars yard a particular composite that basically attracts dirt there's no way of keeping the mars yard for the most part clean and um it it kind of inspired a whole bunch of people to you know like i've done sketch on the midsole write some snappy logo um get them fucked up on purpose like mine are i don't i don't have them here at the moment but mine are completely brutalized trash 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 so i, I love the fact that they kind of did that and sort of um made it made it one of the only shoes i've released in recent years that's really expensive on stock i think it's it goes for a grand still on stock x it's resale price for it is insane but it's also very coveted you don't really find a lot of box fresh pairs of mars yards they just don't exist because they've all been worn by people and people cherish the shoes they they wear them to absolute bits and i love that about them so this is an article here from hypebeast it says the following Nike and Tom Sachs are inviting you to be a sneaker, to be, to be a Nike Craft Mars GR 2.5 wear tester. Um, so let's watch the video and then we can continue. Come on, press, 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 press. In development, failure is always an option. So, so, so in case you're um, listening to the podcast only, you have this um, video of Tom Sachs on a treadmill and various picture, various people within a Tom Sachs studio are throwing all manner of, um, you know, objects and concrete blocks and wooden planks um, uh, at him as he's running on the, on the treadmill to obviously get a little bit of an idea of how the shoes respond to some very treacherous conditions. Failure is an opportunity for improvement. Wow. And again, oh, so good, the shoe is so beautiful. So they're essentially the same as the shoe that I have at the moment, but they've basically updated the they've updated the outer materials, so they look like they're waterproof. I'm not sure what material they've made out of, whether it's Gore-Tex or something else. Um, they then added this really amazing uh, rubberized toe box at the front, which is possibly a kind of nod to making them somewhat, um, you know, um, uh, resistance to like 
no, making it somewhat similar to like a steel toe, a steel toe cap boot, right? That's probably what they've, they've kind of garnered the, the idea behind them. And maybe there's been a lot of feedback around people that are wearing them, who have been wearing them to the studio, right? Or to they're just going to, going about doing whatever they're doing in the city, um, putting them into bike clips, whatever they're be. So that might be kind of where the inspiration came from in general. Because I did see a lot of people who are kind of within the arts um community and all this malarkey wearing them day to day and having those kind of be their everyday wears um especially when they first came out so maybe that's probably where the information come from i'm not too sure let's continue testing in a controlled environment Oof, only so good so far look how good they look man eventually you need the real world Versatility breeds durability. I love everything about them. And it, and, it, and it might be one of the most perfect colorways that exists, no? Don't you guys think? Like the mixture of that, the brown and the red and that striking red swoosh, uh, brown upper, off-white midsole or the bone colored midsole, um, the black tread on the outside, like just the perfect colorway. And they're so striking from a distance. Like I sometimes wear mine to the gym because I've had them for flipping ages and they're, you know, on their last legs. Um, but they still get a lot of compliments. And it, yeah, that's the thing. They're the only shoe that I have, um, lim well, not limited, but the only kind of rare quote unquote shoe that I have that regular people compliment a lot. You remember when Yeezys first came out? Now I'm not so because I think people are used to the shape and, you know, you can get kind of copies of the Yeezy type of shoe in Primark. But, you know, when Yeezys first came out, people were like, oh, they look really interesting. They look really comfortable because they had like a sock design, that really thick sole. You didn't really see that model or shape anywhere. So I think that may be the same thing with the Mars Yard. But it's something about the Mars. Maybe it's a makeup of the colors because I think a lot of dudes like brown shoes and boots and the kind of workman like um, look of them. They're very, uh, they're very kind of... Uh, they 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 they're sort of contemporary without being too faffy, right? But they're very workmanlike in that respect. So you get a lot of compliments. I have anyway for just regular, you know, regular average day uh, people coming up to, especially dudes saying, "Oh, I really like those shoes. Where are they? Where can I get them from?" And it's also interesting too that they've never retro the shoe. This model's never been retroed. They just keep it within the Mars, within the Tom Sachs Mars Yard sort of ecosystem, and that's it, which is very odd. Nike always love to like make a cool shoe, make a cool model, and then just completely rinse it by making it a GR in loads of different different colorways. And like I said before, if they did make this into a GR, I'd buy every single colorway in doubles easily. In the studio, we are specialists. So good. We are athletes. <laughs> we push our equipment to meet our unique demands. It is so good. There is a limit to what we can anticipate. Science is knowing what you don't know. We need your help. Look how good they look. Look how good they look of a shoe. They, they, they completely elevate the guy's look, huh? Don't you think so? Come on, man. Help us find the sweet spots. Help us find the weak points. Help us wear these shoes to death. Actually, let, let me get mine. I'll, sh I'll show you mine, actually. Let's keep playing this. To join our wear testing program, post a one minute video to your Instagram feed. The opening shot must list your Instagram handle, your location, and your shoe size. Explain why you want to join. Tag Tom Sachs and use the hashtag NikeCraftWearTester so we see it. That doesn't matter now because it's already gone past already. Do you take these shoes to have and to hold 
to wear and to tear and document daily. Can't really see the shoes. Do you swear to return these shoes upon completion of the experiment? So cool. We require hard work and commitment. This is a collaboration. This is your chance to leave your mark. How cool is that, no? How cool is that? How amazing is that to see? And again, I'm a big fan of the shoe, as you can see with my pair here. They're completely battered, right? I wrote on the bottom of them a little bit. The soles all smashed up, as you can see here from the bottom. Um, the shoe itself has no insole because I know I don't wear insoles. I chuck them out straight away. Um, yeah, they're just they're just they're just they so they worn so much that they're completely bold on the bottom actually from all the tread and shit. But they're easily one of my favorite shoes, and I've worn mine like you know every, especially when I got them. You can as you can tell, I wore them every single day. I I'm gonna say for at least a year, easy at least a year. I used to wear them every single day to work. Like one of my favorite shoes, and again I love the sole. I love that they kind of kept the sole and basically updated the upper somewhat. I think on mine it's just basically a mesh sort of you know on the side so the this is the worst shoe to wear in the rain now at the moment this current model but this model will also be um weatherproof so definitely upgrade it somewhat and um yeah man i'm really happy to see that they've basically updated it um again these are the other one i think the right pair is a lot more worn than the other one actually it's got even the inside of here it's been a bit battered as you can see but I love them, man. Easily one of my favorite shoes. Easily, easily, easily. I can't wait to get another pair. Hopefully, I do get another pair. I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen because Nike flipping sneakers app is one of the worst things to ever exist for sneakerheads out there. But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that things change somehow between now and then. But again, I love the. I just love the idea that they're kind of promoting it in this way. They're sort of kind of pushing this idea that you should be wearing your shoes. They're pushing the idea of wearing your wear testing it, which kind of harkens back to the days of old with Nike wear test and people that used to kind of especially skaters used to go out and basically tape their shoes so people wouldn't see what they were and they would kind of report back findings on midsoles and uppers and shit that was a really clever world back in the day now nike don't need to do that because they probably have you know the facilities and the money and the expertise to kind of do that shit behind closed doors or sometimes even remotely but there was a time back in the day when that was a big thing like you'd kind of get you know you'd get seeded the people that get seeded are celebrities the people that get seeded for just wear testing stuff they kind of give back you know notes on where the like for instance like this one at the moment one of the things I'd say that I don't like about it is the tongue. When you tie your laces, it kind of like moves around too much. And I don't like putting it through that hoop on the, on the tongue, on the, on the book, on the actual tongue. They've got a hoop on it to put it through. So when you tie them up, your your tongue sort of moves around too much, um, in my opinion there. Um, but apart from that, you know, again, a perfect, perfect shoe. One of my absolute favorites. I can't wait to get another one when they do release sometime very soon. As you can tell here, I'm going to get a little screenshot there for myself. Like, ee -hee 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 -hee. Um, but yeah, hopefully they come out another one and I get them very, very soon. Again, I don't know when they're due to come out. I think they're due to come out. I'm, I'm going to say sometime this year because i'm guessing it might be delayed just to covid because i'm sure there was a whole activation plan around them the same they did with these where they kind of had a whole little um workout thing that they were doing but let's see hopefully they come out very soon hopefully you get an idea of it i'm jealous of everyone that did a wear test um let me know if you have got a pair already and how you're liking them Anyway, that's Excellent Zing Show, episode number 420. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to leave it from there. Um, it's been a pleasure to have your company, as per usual. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please download the show, share it, leave me a five-star review, and, and um, let me know what you think of the show. And of course, support via Patreon. It's always more than welcome at patreon.com. That's patreon.com. That's A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O. So put me in a Patreon, get involved. It'll be a pleasure to have your company. And again, I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Have a great rest of the weekend and speak again on the other side.